I'm sort of um, really taken with Hollywood iconic history and um, Chateau Marmont and like th those sort of things where lots of things have happened and uh -huh. they're just still there and they're kind of awesome, but it's very yeah. kind of like this stuff. But the the Magic Castle is it's kind of a mysterious place to me. I've never been there. I haven't seen a show there. I know it's open. You know, there are shows you can buy tickets, obviously, and go uh -huh. there. But tell me about the Magic Castle. Just a, just a quickly, a snapshot of what what that is and what it is to be part of it. And, and is there another level of participation as a magician that you have there that other people have? Yeah. So have? the Magic Castle is like the it's like the clubhouse for the organization known as the Academy of Magical Arts, and it's a uh, you know, a hundred-year-old mansion that's been turned into a kind of a members-only nightclub. Mm -hmm. um, in the fifties or the early sixties, it was turned into this, been turned into the Magic Castle, and it's you know sits high on a hill uh, overlooking Hollywood. Like it's mm -hmm. it's it's the only thing in the world like it where it is a well-regarded, very you know high-esteemed place associated with magic where you have to be a magician to be a member and then if you're not a magician to go you need to be a guest of a member mm -hmm. you've got a strict dress code and yeah. you know once you're inside it's kind of like um, it's kind of like a trip back to this you know Cary Grant era Hollywood sure, you yeah, know yeah. it's very authentic in the decor and it it's uh, there's you know multiple showrooms and bars and a restaurant and it you know like I've i always kind of fantasized about this place as a kid magician growing up in St. Louis. I yeah. read about it and all these, I scour these old magic magazines, you know, from the 60s and the 70s and just read about this place and yeah. um, uh, where all the best magicians would perform. And then when I came out to L.A. with my parents when I was 13, uh, we went. You have to be 21 to get in. Uh -huh. I didn't know that. <laughs> so I, they, I sent them in to go see my mentor who was performing that week. I waited in the car. Really? In the parking lot. How defeating was Cried that? and fell asleep. Was, really? Yeah, defeating. What but, was going through your mind when you couldn't well, get I was in so and they got to yeah. see the show? I was in the car in a suit. <laughs> 14 years old, just <laughs> crying. That yeah. had to shape you. And I'm just... Uh, I, the, the comedy of that in some respect... Of fourteen-year-old Justin in a suit. Uh huh. The time of his life is happening just through those doors, and you yeah. have to sit in a car and wait for your He's parents. Not old enough. Yeah. But I insisted that they go in and okay. go, go, have a drink, go see a show, like right. roam around, come tell me all about it. Sure. And they did, which yeah. is great. And then I think we went that weekend then for brunch. You can get in for brunch. That's okay. when minors are allowed in. Got it. And. You know, like, I take for, it's, it's interesting because I've, you know, it's been a part of my life for so long. You know, when I first moved to L.A. now 18 years ago, I auditioned to become a member. And I think you go through these phases where you're kind of like, you know, okay, I'm a professional. You know, it's, it's like very, very incredible at first. And then you kind of resent it a little bit. Uh, whenever I get, whenever I tell anybody I'm, I'm a magician in L.A., they ask me about this place. Like, I don't need the Magic Castle. Come on. You right. Know, like, you kind of, like, shove it away. And then... You know, in recent years, I've re-embraced it as this, you know, just this rare, beautiful mecca that it is. Because it's a, it, magicians don't have, like, a, a home other than this place. You yeah. know, other cities don't have this kind of thing. Right. Where magicians are, are the gods, you mm -hmm. know, in these walls. And, the, you know, they book all the, these great magicians from all over the world. And sometimes there's some duds mixed in there. And sometimes sure. there's some cheesy stuff, like the exact kind of thing that I don't, you know, like, I, I sometimes get a little riled up because I know that when people go there, this might be the only magician they see in person sure. for a decade. Right. And I want everything they see to serve the art form. And sometimes there's things that, you know, yeah. are cringy or eye rolling. But Well, I mean, we went to the... I like to go to the comedy store when I'm here, uh, try to catch a show. But, you know, those... You know, you're seeing 12 to 15 acts. There's some uneven ones in there. Yeah, sure. And they're also experimenting and trying new material there isn't you know they're developing stuff in 10 to 15 minutes exactly sets. so yeah but i understand if it's like that's your opportunity to see magic and that's what if if the takeaway is kind of wrong or meh then that you sort of feel that ugh. yeah but but over i mean but it is such a special gift it's like such a special place um because magic is like this subculture it's like this subset of entertainment that by design, you know, you, you kind of are kept from knowing too much about it. Yeah. And, but it's not big enough 
to be like, you know, like the comedy world where there's comedy clubs all over the place. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's not an art form that, at least right now, can uh, support that many, sure. you know, venues. Yeah. So it, it, is, it is so special and because of its history, so iconic. And it's and in your backyard, basically. Yeah, and it's right here. Yeah. It's right here. I should go more often. I only make it up there once a month. I know you probably get so. asked this all the time, but within that network of magicians there, do you, do you guys talk shop a lot, talk techniques and how you develop tricks, or is it kind of all keeping things close to the No, best? magicians very much will share in mm -hmm. session and kind of any question is... Sure. Like, we have magic conventions. Like, the Magic Castle is more of kind of like, you know, the night out. There's less... There's some kind of like comparing of notes, but we have magic conventions where it's just like pure hang, yeah. uh, talk and shop, catching up, mm -hmm. pure love, brotherhood, sisterhood kind of thing. You can go to a magic, there's a magic convention in Vegas every year called Magic Live, which is kind of like a big one. And you'll, as a kid who maybe started magic last week, you can get in and you can meet David Blaine, who's wandering around, David mm -hmm. Copperfield, pop in. Sure. You know, like the best magicians. Oh, there's Penn, you know. Yeah. Like, I don't know any other subculture where you can meet, or industry where you can walk into a convention having done it a week and happen to shake hands and meet the, the Titans. The icons. Yeah. yeah. So it's, that's really, really special. And I've got my core group who I kind of, like, bounce ideas off of and jam with and yeah. have a shorthand lingo with. And, uh, I mean, it's I find it to be much more of a sharing community mm -hmm. than, you know, comedy often has the same thing, but gets like this flip side where, you know, trash talking, negativity. This Full Exposure podcast episode has been made possible through the support of Metro Health, University of Michigan Health, and Dr. Peter Hahn, who believe that creativity and the arts are essential to a rich, healthy, and fulfilling life.